Okay, welcome to Don's Trains. Um, I'm going to be handling the camera by hand on this one today. Um, as I've been kind of burning through these uh, MPC uh, steamers, I realized that, uh, uh, you know, technology was kind of progressive on these throughout the years. So that would be kind of fun to um, line them all up, uh, <laughs> MPC steamers on parade, so to speak. Um, show you each one. And then go over anything that was kind of significant um, to it from the last one. Not not like a major overview of each one, but just kind of a, hey, this is how things change as these went along. Because it's kind of interesting to see um, how that occurred on these sometimes. So we'll start out with the uh, oldest one I got, which is from 79. And the first um, Famous American Railroads uh, release which initially was cataloged as uh, Greatest American Railroads, I believe. I had to whip out the catalog another day and take a look at it. That's what they had. But um, before this guy came out, um, you'll have like the Southern uh, Crescent and the, um, the uh, Blue Comets that you'll see occasionally. Um, both of them are pretty similar to this. Uh, just, you know, super basic four-wheel trucks. Um... I think the solid uh, coupler on the back. I'll walk you away and see it. And then uh, neither of those had a whistle on them either. Some of the early MPC steamers um, had whistles, but apparently they're quite unreliable. So they dropped in, just stuck with the uh, uh, mighty sound of steam. So in the 79, there was still no uh, whistles. But uh, this particular casting. On these, they were, they used it quite a bit. Um, so this was just kind of more of the same, essentially, but it was more realistically decorated and stuff like that. And uh, it was kind of a kind of a weird little half step into uh, the wider world of getting into some uh, more realistic and more uh, detailed steamers. So after that guy came. The second release, uh, the following year, 1980, I'll also show you something interesting I just thought of. You see, uh, 8900 was the uh, part number for this 6-A900. That 9 tells you uh, the last digit of the year. So, in our case, we know this was in 79, but that would basically tell you that it would be like 79, 89, something like that. Not that NPC stuff ran that long, but that's what that means. For instance, this is an 8002. The zero tells me it had to be 70 or 80, judging from uh, production. But uh, yeah, this here is the uh, second entry into the famous American set. It also was the reintroduction of the Berkshire. And it also brought the uh, electronic whistle back. Uh, this is also the first uh, Lionel steamer, and this one's a little bent, that ever had uh, elfin ears or smoke deflectors on them, however you want to call it. Um, but these have six wheel trucks. You can see they got two wires. That go up there. You can't really see because it's kind of buried in there. It only has one. Um, they do have operating couplers on them. Finally, uh, one thing with these, and I'll kind of kind of briefly go over. You can kind of see how the the paint shades different from the elephant here. The uh, paint on these, um, for some reason, like if it's exposed to heat, I think it is. They'll they'll get kind of funky looking. This one is a pretty nice model I got. It is unrun, but unfortunately it, it has that. And it's super common. I don't think you're going to really avoid it much. But that same year, we also got the 8003 uh, Chessy Steam Special. Um, this one's kind of interesting, though. As you can see, one wire, but it still has a whistle. It actually has a uh, pickup on the tender on these for some reason. So it's kind of like they hadn't quite decided how they wanted to do that. They were like, oh, well... We'll do it this way on that one, and that way on this one, and see what happens. So it's kind of a little bit of an oddball. But I'll be going over this one by itself eventually. But uh, yeah, it does have one wire, but it does actually feature both of those. And it's almost exactly a duplicate of that one, except the elephant ears, and then it's got the, the board on the front. The other uh, steamer put out that year is kind of another oddball. is the 8006 uh, Silver Shadow, I think is what they called it. This was a J.C. Penney exclusive that year in 80, as you can see from the 8006. Um, I'll go over this one 
uh, more in depth at some point, but you see one wire, uh, back to the four wheel trucks, solid uh, coupler on the back. So, sorry, got a lot of focus there. So, um, obviously that one was probably in the planning stages previously, or it's possible that JCPenney just didn't want uh, anything too fancy. Uh, regardless, now this one's kind of an odd one. This is the third release in the uh, famous American set, and what's odd is you'll see that 3100. This was put out in 81, but it starts with a 3. If you notice, all these all start with an 8. Uh, why this one starts with a 3? No idea. It's the only steam locomotive they put out that was not an 8 something. Um, could not tell you. Uh, I don't know if anybody out there even knows. But it's pretty much a, a duplicate of the previous, same elephant ears. But what's interesting on this one, we'll go over it a little bit more. This one they got a little crazy and put a four wheel truck in the front. Um, something else you might notice on these is that uh, this particular Hudson and the Burks actually share a uh, very similar uh, die cast uh, body on them. As you can see, the units here on that. But it's up here on these, they got different motors in them. So it's a little different, but as you can see, that is a very similar casting line. I reworked it for both of them. So uh, some of the part switcherooing is possible on these to come up with stuff. And then that was 81. The other two locomotives in 81 are kind of interesting, though. As you get the um, No Fork and Western uh, 611 come out and it, it was kind of interesting because this was the first one to come out that has a prototypical number it's 611 it's not numbered any of this other stuff it does have a, a typical stock number that fits in but they put a prototypical number on it and then as an upgrade from the original one out of the late 50s six wheel trucks this one does feature two wires on it I kind of forgot this is a two wire here uh, the other one to come out that year is the Chicago and Alton Red Train. Again, prototypical number, two wires, also brought back the die cast tender. Uh, this is the first use of it. Everything up to this point had always been this. Uh, some of the uh, cheaper trains, I guess you would say, sometimes would have like the square uh, tenders or the slope backs. Um, but this is the first instance of that. Now, I don't have all the MPC Air steamers. I do. I kind of try to only get the ones that are actually based off of real trains or uh, something like that because they put out a couple uh, oddballs here and there like a Cowan edition uh, Hudson. It's not. A, it's actually a pretty, uh, pretty neat looking set. It's like bronze and gold. And then uh, there's also a TCA Hudson that came out at a certain point, but I don't have those and don't really plan to own them. Not that they're bad models. It just don't interest me. And then um, these guys really. 82 was kind of a weird one because no big steamers were really issued in 82. This only came out in a uh, special catalog that features that cast tender and a prototypical number again. Um, and this one is one of the first to feature the new hookup style. Try to get in there a little bit and kind of see it. It uses uh, these little pins to connect to each other and it's got three wires on there. So that was kind of a new thing. In the following year in 83, they redressed the uh, No Fork and Western into a Southern Pacific GS. It also features the uh, that uh, connector style like that. And again, everything up to this point has featured now six wheel trucks functioning uh, knuckle coupler on the back. And then they got a little creative again with the Southern uh, Mikado, which uh, is number four, um, as you can see, three wires. I think got a little creative to do that. And then this is also the only famous American uh, loco that comes with a die cast tender. Um, things, though, up to this point were pretty steady on what they were doing, but things would switch up again, though, uh, after this one. This would be 84. This guy came out in 85, the uh, turbine. And this one got kind of interesting. It's number five, as you see from the tender. It went to this big chunky one right here, which features uh, five wires, as you can see, because this one uh, actually has backup lights 
in here, which I think I went over in a separate video. But it's kind of a weird thing, and I don't think um, they ever repeated it on any of these. It was this is the only one that ever did it. What's interesting though is, as you can see, there's there's holes in the back of a, a tender. I'm trying to zoom that in. I had trouble with this the last time I was trying to show you. But there's tenders back or holes in the back of the tender for that, and uh, that uh, started showing up in the in the uh, castings for these. I guess we'll call them, but it was never utilized again, as far as I'm aware, in the NPC era at least. And then in '86 came some of our last ones. Uh, we have this guy here, which was uh, the Fallen Flags first uh, set. The wall bash. Um, it's kind of interesting. They put a number board on the front. Um, another prototypical number. Everything's had prototypical numbers again at, at this point. Um, it does feature um, elephant ears on it, which I don't think is correct to these. I don't think they had that. I, th I think uh, wall bash specifics were a little bit different than this, but it's a beautiful model regardless. So, I mean, I'm not going to complain about it. But prototypical number back to a three wire and then on this one you can't really tell but the holes in the back are still open as if this could have a light unit but it doesn't have it um but this is the exact same casting as the uh, 8900 uh, santa fe uh, hudson they just put a different truck on the back but uh, it's kind of interesting to see how they can redress some of these guys and, and get a lot of different features and functions out of them like for example this one actually has like a separately applied swinging bell which is typically something you didn't see on these lower end Hudson's. Typically only the um, the Burks had those, but there it is. That kind of threw something special in there. Then the last one they put out was a JC Penny exclusive, the LNN Big Emma. It uh, is pretty much a very simple just Berkshire repeat, nothing special. Three wires there. The tender still has the hole in the back. Uh, for the lights, not that this one uses them either. Um, I don't think I really got anything else I wanted to go over on these. I just kind of wanted to run through them year by year. These are put in, you know, production order. And it's just kind of interesting to see how the technology on some of this stuff uh, progresses over time. You know, sometimes you'll see like big jumps, like these initial first ones, you know. Every year you see something kind of new popping up, and then when you get to 81, 82, 83, 84, everything is kind of pretty simple and standardized for a while. And then uh, suddenly things start changing again in 85, and then 86 really wasn't anything too special. So um, I think that's all I got on this. Um, I've had a couple folks asking about a layout tour. Um, so I'll probably be filming one of them after a while. I still got a lot of work to do on stuff. I haven't even finalized the track plan. I don't even have anything screwed down still. And I kind of just dumped Christmas over here. I didn't know where else to go with it. So uh, uh, just working on some things and trying to finalize some things. And we'll go from there. So thanks for watching.